back to Wellmouth. Deliver ammunition, both literal and ideological. The priest slams his knife into the crate and levers it open. Bullets spill across the snow. This will begin the final battle between the widows and the psalmists. Take arms, cries the priest. With a great roar, his followers scrabble for bullets, rifles slung over their shoulders. They stream from the church in a stamping, cursing mob and make a beeline for the silent village of Wellmouth. Widows fled from the cottages and scrabble across rooftops. They await the psalmist's advance with glimmering eyes. Knives and spiders. The cracks of the psalmist's rifles echo across the well. Widows pounce from the shadows and rooftop, dragging screaming parishioners into alleys. The priest strides amid the chaos, swinging his knife, screaming curses that make even the widows flinch and cower. Join the fight on the psalmist's side. 36% chance of success, that ain't good. Or just let them fight among themselves. Hmm. Let's join the fight on the psalmist's side. Yeah, that's what I expected. You lead your crew in a charge up the street, tearing into the widow's flanks. You quickly discover that there is evasive as smoke. You stab at them and they scuttle out of reach. You shoot at them and they skitter on all fours into alleyways. A widow abruptly drags one of your crew beneath the snow in a thrashing red flurry. Another of your crew slashes at her with his saber, only to have another appear behind him and drive her sharpened fingertips through his throat. He collapses, choking. Your crew retreat before the widow's onslaught. The psalmists will have to fight without you. Sorry, crew. Soon the snow is churned with blood. Corpses scatter the village. You suppose the battle must be over. It's all gone quiet, except the whimpering. Inspect the carnage. Someone must have won whatever winning means here. The corpses of widows lie in tangled heaps, disoriented spiders erupting from every pore. Ugh. Surviving psalmists stalk the streets, prodding the dead with bayonets. When they reach the relic's tar-black cottage, they hesitate, then kick down the door. Empty, like a shucked skin. The relict has knitted herself a trapdoor and disappeared down it. When he lifts the woven flap, the priest finds a single endless thread descending into the infinite abyss of the well. This is a victory, says the priest, lowering the flap of the trapdoor and carefully stepping away from it. You will all be rewarded for your bravery, he glances your way, especially you. Meet me after we've finished cleaning up. Knitted herself a trapdoor and disappeared down it. A single endless thread into the infinite abyss of the well. Oh my god, so they're... They chose to go down the well? It still says something's crawling uninvited through my mind. I thought that would go away. Um, let's visit the twice scorned priest. He has taken up residence in the relict's old cottage, terrible in his triumph. The scent of cooked meat wafts over you as you near the cottage. You quicken your pace. The twice scorned, now triumphant priest. The priest sits in the relict's old armchair, his feet up before a blazing fire. He welcomes you with a rotten grin. He's boarded up the relic's trap door and placed a table over it. On the table sits a platter heaped with bulging pies, filled to the point of cracking, seeping trickles of meat juice. Where did all that meat come from? Are you eating widows? How has the stone-faced court reacted? The widow's duties were an essential part of their tradition, and the court usually react badly to a change in tradition. 
came to an arrangement with the court before I launched our attack on the widows, admits the priest with a smirk. I'm not totally incapable of politics, you know. Provided we took over their ceremonial duties, the Graven were positively giddy at the prospect of getting rid of the widows. It seems they were regarded as a little unnerving. Yes, they certainly were. Eat one of the suspicious pies. Where do the psalmists get so much meat? Weren't they struggling for food? But the pie smells delicious. Delicious enough, perhaps, for you to put your questions aside. It might be widows, or maybe it's their own people. No thanks. Ask for a reward for helping the psalmists. Without you, they would have certainly perished in the snow. Of course, the priest grins. Have you ever seen him grin? You expect you to remember those rotted teeth. The Graven are paying me handsomely for our services. I never expected that life in service of the Judas Psalm would lead me to riches, but it's funny how life turns out. He pours a small glass of brandy and settles back comfortably, offering you a toast. To the suffering of our enemies, to the crushing of insects, to faith in spite. Three casks of Navaratine gemstones. Well, compared to everything that I did for you, that's not really that great of a reward, but eh, whatever. How do I leave? Uh... How do, I, how do I leave? I can't leave from this window. I have to, like, finish my business here. Do I have to eat the pie? What the hell? This doesn't go anywhere. I don't want to forsake my current right. Do I have to eat the pie? Okay. Okay. Deliciously suspicious. Suspiciously delicious. The priest watches you a little too eagerly as you take your first bite, his decaying grin widening. Good, yes? Our treat. Homemade. It is good. So good that you eat it savagely, wolfishly, shoving pastry and crimson meat into your mouth with a frenzied urgency. Soon you realize that the pie is gone, and you're biting and tearing at your own juice-stained fingertips. It only satisfies for a moment. The priest smiles indulgently and pushes the platter towards you. Ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Now I can leave. Did I really have to eat the pie to leave? The walls are mostly silent now, but you can't shake the feeling that something is watching you from the cracks. Yeah, I can still do all the duties, because they have to do the duties of the, the widows. Hmm. Well, this time, let's watch the psalmists inter one of the failed dead. The psalmists have taken to their new duty with savage glee. They have already learned that they are mine. Oh, that's the stuff on italics is like the voice in my head speaking. Right, so whatever's at this... The bottom of this well, whatever creature is talking to people and controlling them and doing whatever it does. It's already grabbed a hold of the psalmists. Hmm. The End of an Immortal The failed dead is a woman in feathered robes, her head shaved, her eyes as dark as coals. The psalmists are dragging her to the edge of the well atop a rickety cart. She awaits her fate with apparent indifference. Once they reach the edge, the psalmists prance around her and yell joyful prayers and spit curses in her direction. She does not flinch. With a final amen, they kick her unceremoniously into the abyss. We lay eggs in their eyes and feed on their flesh and cast webs in their bones, and yet they do not die.
I don't like this place. It didn't get any better now that I've helped the psalmists. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Well, that was a fun time. I think I want to go to the Forge of Souls now, but I need to get a bunch of things beforehand, because we have a lot of... Oh, we have a lot of creations to make. So, I'll uh, bring you back when I'm heading to the Forge of Souls. There's a curator here? Have I ever seen a curator in the Blue Kingdom? Be good for terror reduction, I think, right? Damn it. <laughs> Gabby's on my desk, purring and bashing the microphone. Thank you, baby. Oh. Hold on, I got a curator to kill. trophy, so from 39% to 14%. Nice. Desperately needed here in the Blue Kingdom. Okay, gonna head over to the Forge of Souls. We have that big, like, uh, correspondence scavenger hunt thing finished from the... What was it called? The... Was it like the Court of Sevens? The Something of Sevens? You know the person that wants us to find a loophole for them to get the hell out of that horrible dead-end job? So we have that to turn in, and also a bunch of things to try to make. First one of which... Well, actually, I don't know if I want to make anything other than just the one, but... Yeah, the one thing that I definitely want to make is... The, uh... The big scribe spinster that I forgot the name of at the Forge of Souls. They wanted us to make them some scribe spinsters. To help them with their... Incredibly overloaded workload. I'm expecting to find Spearifers over here. I think I usually do. Oop. Yep. Oh, two of them. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a case for mines. And that mine blew up and hurt me. But we're getting some help. Good. Let's switch to rockets. Yeah, the projectiles from the Lagoy are kind of tracking me when they get near me, but it's not actually trying to attack me. It's just the projectiles that are trying to attack me. That didn't hurt the Lagoy.
<laughs> what if our rockets actually like hit each other midair and blew up? Oh shit. Oh shit. Ah, oh, fuck. Ooh. This one's been killed. Yeah, let's try to repair our hole. Definitely. 12 points. Yeah, you got it. Good job. Are you going to try to bash the Lagoy? Oh, buddy. Good luck with that. Grab the engine. 16 points. Why are you going the same way? That's awkward. Gotta be careful not to release a mine behind me just for funsies. Definitely a much safer weapon than what I was using last time I was here. But it is slow. This should do it. If all I do is just kill them and then use them to repair my hole from the damage I took killing them, I'm not really gaining anything, am I? Oh, it was... it wasn't... Court of the Sevens, was it Clerk of the Sevens? Enter the Lyceum. Port report. Yeah, Clerk of Sevens. Deliver the correspondence that the clerk requested. The sigils are prone to combustion. It would be far safer were they away from your engine. The clerk is silent for a long moment after you hand her the sigils. Then, thank you. Sincerely, I wasn't certain you, anyone, could do it. She hauls several heavy clay tablets from beneath her desk and begins carving correspondence sigils into them with a knife. As she works, she gives you a partial explanation. The set of tablets bear the terms of her service. Each sigil you brought her has its place, expanding the scope of phrase here or introducing contradictions there. This will grant me a period of freedom. If I return occasionally, the king might not even notice I'm gone. It will only last for a time, but... She grins fiercely. I intend to make the most of it. Well, have fun. 
searing enigma. Ask what the clerk intends to do. Where does she intend to go? I've been stuck at the Forge of Souls for years. The High Wilderness will have changed since I last went exploring. Londoners never could let things lie, she smiles. I have a standing invitation to Langley Hall. I'll look for familiar faces there. Hmm. Langley's lost lover? That seems unlikely. It doesn't seem like they've been... It doesn't seem like their soul has been scattered and shattered, like Langley mentioned. <laughs> no, they, they seem all together. Have a look at the clerk's work. Have I been doing this before? I mean, have I done that before? I think so. Yes. Just how everything has to do with seven. All right, reform, uh, return to the Forge of Souls. I think I have to use a Testament of the Feather to get in. I think. Any chance the first venture could be Langley's Lost Lover? No. Yeah, testing with a feather to get in. All right. So I want to cr try to craft a scribe spinster. I need an aspect of dominion, which I can do with two panes of stained glass. Yeah, and that gives me caprices of the forge, which makes the forge more angry and more unlikely to do the thing I want it to do. So let's just do it right now. As was taught by the Regent of the Reach to the Binary, says the Venturer reverently. The Forge will need time to recover after this. You will need to re-access it later. Old recipes are consulted. The sisters in green and gold mediate between the ministers white and red. A dozen sheaves of wood are burnt, rekindled, and burnt again. At last, they have something approaching a soul... This is carefully guided through the echoing halls, growing as it's imbued by each spirit of the appropriate character. You watch as the sisters pin quills to the form, sewing parchment wings onto its bronzewood flesh. Correspondence is traced from the walls onto its hood. Claws curl, yearning for scraps of old knowledge. It is, at last, unmistakably a scribe spinster. The lamentation of mists will be pleased. Okay, excellent. So now I can enter the Forge of the Lamentations permission instead of having to spend a Testament of the Feather. Nice. Uh, I probably can't do anything right now though, right? I have to wait, I imagine. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't look like it. Aspect of the Hourglass. Aspect of Dominion. It seems like I can just make something. Do I want to make anything, though? I don't think so. Now I can just easily get in to see the Lamentation of Mists. Inform him the Lamentation is aware of your value. You have helped the Lamentation of Mists create scribe spinsters. She should be able to make time for you. The unworthy scribe stands, beckoning for you to follow. My mistake. This is why I remain a lowly scribe. Come, come. I'm sure she's waiting even now on your arrival. He continues unconvincingly. So, yeah, we don't really have anything new to talk about, but I should get a Testament of Salt. I did that last time, and it was hard, I think. But I need another one. Three bodies are required to test the validity of your claim. Right, some of my crew... So if I fail, punishment will be done upon my crew. Let's not fail. Which three? I think I did the gunners before. Let's do the, the stokers this time. The sooty-fingered keepers of the boiler, often to be found shirking off. 
<clears throat> Three pairs of eyes peek out behind faces masked with coal dust. One stoker is close to tears. The others look on ahead. Suppose we was lying about our hours, Captain, the most senior says stoically. The trial of appetite. Hmm. Undergo my trial. I think this is all the same so far. Placed in a box. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is... No, this whole thing is new here now. You're placed in a box. You have only the company of the Lamentations crooning and cradling until she remembers to let you out three days later. You are neither fed nor watered during this period. When you emerge, it is into a vast banqueting hall where the red of the meat contrasts with the deep sapphire of the table. Examine the feast. Tender white meats and curried vegetables. Sauces red and gold and spiced. It has been prepared for you. There's no one else here after all. You approach the lazulite tables, groaning from the weight of the platters placed upon them. There is an approximation of a London table setting. The number of napkins is correct, but there are far too many knives. What catches your eye? The vegetables, the meats, or the dessert? The meats, rich and ripe and suckling, especially after eating uh, human, you know, cannibalism at the White Well. We're focused on the meats. <clears throat> the meats of game that would put the Leadbetter and Stainward Reserve to shame are laid out, immaculately quartered across the tables. Some succulently brown, some seared with a lattice of black griddle lines. Others so rare they're still dripping in pink. You are ravenous. Distract myself or control my hunger. Mm. To achieve the Testament of Salt, you must demonstrate iron discipline over your stomach, even as the aroma of succulent flesh and perfectly immaculately fried vegetables wafts over you. 21% chance of success for that. But I can also use a savage secret. I have 46 of those. Let's use a savage secret to distract myself. Contemplate something particularly juicy. You content yourself in the torrid vicissitude of what you know. The twists and dramatic ironies, the strange plays of fate, and the awful revelation of the skull beneath the skin. It's a precious jewel and keeps you occupied for hours, while the food cools slowly all around. <clears throat> hours later, the unworthy scrub appears to take you away. Oh, well done. You have passed. Your crew are safe. Wow, I did that, and I only lost a savage secret? That is getting off light. Why can I not just enter? Do I have to wait? Oh, I think I can... I think I only have the Lamentation of Mist's gratitude for like one time. I think I've used it up, I guess? I think? Is that what's happened? I guess so, because I don't even see it as an option here. Hmm. Shall I try to make another one? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have the Lamentations Gratitude. Do I want another Testament of the Salt? I suppose. But... I mean, if I'm... If I'm going to spend a testament of the feather to get in here to get their gratitude so I can see them for free to get a testament of the salt, why don't I just use the testament of the feather to get audience with them and then just do that directly? It would cost me less things, wouldn't it? That seems sensible. Yeah, oh, it seems to be getting laggy. But yeah, let's get another Testament of Assault. 
petition. Offer a testament of the feather. Testament of salt. What trial are we going to get this time? Mm, this time let's do the signalers. The quick and nimble communicators assure your safe passage through the skies. They're prone to backtalk. Their signalers' expressions are grave. Uh, time for a smoke first, Captain? The most senior asks. She lights up without waiting for your response, then passes it to her comrades. Oh, it's the trial of appetite again? Cool. Well, lucky then, I guess. We just do the same thing, right? Examine the feast. Look at the meats. Distract myself. Alright, two testament of salt. Heading back to Sky Barnet. I'll bring you back if I encounter any enemies. Oh, here we go. Spear of her. Let's try mine, so it's another two of them. Damn it, the projectiles explode them. Go back to trying mines. But I gotta wait for them to oh shit to not have projectiles coming after me, otherwise they'll just blow up on the projectiles. Also, the blue Lagoy, I'm sure, would like to have a word with them. Oh yeah, shoot it. Good luck with that. Oh shit, I boosted the wrong way. Actually, the blue Lagoy doesn't seem to care. down. Jesus. Yeah, they're quite tough, even with these safer weapons. Hmm. I don't really need otherworldly artifacts. Let's loot the engine's plundered hall. Failure. Jumble of undistinguished souls. Mediocre. I guess there's no point in scrapping the engine, because I'm just about to be home, and I'm going to repair my entire hull anyway. Ah, uh, another failure. Went back to Sky Barnet, did the usual stuff, and now I'm at the House of Days right next to it. Let's get the status of Ephemera, so I can finally go back down into the tunnels around Death's Door, or Doorstep. So with the Court of Oaks, I can claim the status of Ephemera with two casks of Navartine Gemstones and the Testament of the Salts. Salt, rather, not plural. You've been yoked long enough. The Court of Oaks might rule you to be free. First, there's the wait to reach the attendant's window. Then, when at last you do, it's in no hurry to collect your information. From courtesy, it asks you first about your birth and family, 
and then about your travels, and next about your state of health. Several hours pass before it even opens an inquiry about your status. So you talk and talk until your breath is exhausted, but it is enough in the end. You're marked ephemera rather than yoked, and now you may move about as the ephemera do.